Hello. <laughs> I did a just chatting Twitch stream last week, and the main question was, Alex, what's the day-to-day -day like in 2021? Well, this morning, I'm actually installing a security system for one of my customers, and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Okay, so, you know when something just really, really goes to plan? That's what's just happened. Basically, one of my customers had a Hikvision CCTV system that he absolutely despised, so I've gone in this morning and basically put in one of my systems in. I've sprayed it all black so it all looks absolutely stellar, and it's all linked together with point-to-point -point links wirelessly. Customer is over the moon. Talking of customers... So as you guys know, I have always been into networking, and to be fair, all of you have had the privilege, I'll call it a privilege, of seeing my self-taught networking journey develop over the years. I am literally all self-taught, and everything that I'm showing you today is stuff that I've learned through friends and taught myself. So I'm gonna take you around my network, show you how it earns me money month in, month out, and I'm actually this time going to take you to a brand new site that I've set up that can sell my broadband to hopefully explain a bit more about how it all works. <laughs> now, this will make much more sense as this video progresses and we actually physically go and visit a few of my internet sites, but what you need to know for now is basically to receive broadband from me, you have to be in a clear line of sight to one of my base stations, and we actually have a coverage map on my website which is a little bit outdated now because we've well we've bought on a few new sites since this was done now to connect to my service I need to visit your property and install it and there's mainly two things that I will install in your house it will be something like this which is a little dish which receives my internet connection it's tiny and this is what I'll put on if you're within 500 meters of one of my base stations don't matter if you're a bit further away though it just means we're gonna have to put uh, a bit of a bigger dish on that looks a little more something like this and as you can see this one's already configured to go out it has a label on it because I'm organized or as some people like to call me a freak do, 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 do. I have these skins with my company name on and these get put on here right so it's like custom branding my own custom routers you saw this at my clients house earlier now, sometimes if the customer's house is quite big, we will install these things. These are basically wireless access points. Problem is with them, you have to run a cable to each one. So what I've recently been doing is using these mesh systems and again, putting my own custom branding on them. You basically just place these in different rooms around your house. They don't need to be connected with a cable and they will mesh the Wi-Fi around your property. Okay, so now you know how it's set up on the customer end. There's no contracts, it's just you pay for it when you want it, and if you don't want it, you just stop paying me. That's cool. Okay, now I think we can visit the core. Okay, so my brother obviously goes to school, so whenever I come to this house, just trying to stay safe. I'm really excited to show you this. It's also 36 degrees up here, and I'll show you how I know that a little bit later on, a little cool piece of tech. But let's go and check out this rack, this core network. Okay, so as a lot of you will know, I have shown this on my channel before. However, you have never seen this looking like this. About two months ago, one Saturday morning at 6 a.m., I came up here and I ripped all of this out and basically rebuilt it from the ground up to support me growing my network over the next few years. Because obviously I've got plans to try grow this thing even more. So we'll go through what I've managed to rebuild. Obviously we've got the branding here on the front, which doesn't really mean anything, but I just kind of like it. LED strips to light everything up. Let's start from the most important thing, power. 
Now, this device right here is a device from CyberPower and it's what's called a UPS. Now, basically, what I do is I feed one socket into this UPS, which is that one there that's labeled UPS. Now, if I click this button, it should say a battery percentage of 100%. Now, basically what's gonna happen here is if the power gets cut off to this house, this will kick in its batteries and all of these sockets here will stay on, even if there's no power to this house. It will stay on for about 40 minutes until all the batteries die, but it's just for redundancy in case the power goes off at this house. This section, these four shelves, are basically the leased line in unscientific terms. Anybody can order a leased line, they're just super, super expensive. What is a leased line? Well, it's basically your own unmetered direct connection to the internet and you're not sharing it with anybody else. Then this blue cable comes out and now this is mine to do whatever I want with. So I could plug this into a computer, but what I'm actually doing is plugging it into an edge router 4, which is basically the core of my network. This tiny little thing in here. Basically, the edge router is the core of the network. It takes all of the public IP addresses as to which all of my customers get their own public IP. It basically ties the public IP address to a PPPoE username and password, which I can then give to all my clients. I pipe that info into their routers, which I give them, and then they are online. So it's literally one cable that goes into this edge router. The edge router does everything, and then I send out this fiber SFP cable, which is labeled uplink right here, into this Netonic switch. And then up here, L1, L2, L3, R1, R2, and R3. Those are basically three cables for each side of the house, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And as you can see, one goes left, like I said, and one goes right. And that is basically the core of the network. Super, super simple, but that's how I like it and that's how it needs to be. In case things go wrong, I don't wanna be, you know, having to rip out cables and thinking, oh, where does this go? Where does that go? Everything in here is labeled and it's as simple as I can make it. Now, you may have noticed this little USB device here earlier, which is plugged into the mains. Now this goes up there to a tiny little controller. Now, that device that's plugged in there, USB, basically goes up to the back of the rack and it gives me this telemetry on my phone, which as you can see in here, it is currently 36 degrees and it is now starting to decline. We're back down to 35. So this gives me telemetry about how hot the rack is, but then it also sends me push notifications if the power goes out to this house. It's plugged in USB there. So if it gets the power cut to that USB, I get a notification to say, hey, the power's off and you You've been switched over to your backup power so you need to do something about it or in 40 minutes everything's going off it's about being prepared it's to us wisp people this is actually what you'd call a micro pop which basically means we're going to bring internet to a location uh, via Wi-Fi and then use that location to rebroadcast the internet again via Wi-Fi, okay? Now, as you've seen with the drone shots, we are very, very high up, right? Geographically, which is absolutely great because the higher up one of my micro pops is, the more people it can see, the more people it can serve. And I can actually make other micro pops from this micro pop. So basically all you need to know is the more places I can see, the higher up I am, the better. And as you can see, we're very, very high up at this site. This huge building, which is dwarfing me right now, this is where all of my dishes are. This is one of my sites. And on top of this building, there's currently three dishes. And we know there's three dishes because there's three cables that go up to three of these dishes which are on the roof, right? And these are really thick, heavy duty cables. So basically, in its rawest form, one of these cables goes to a dish which brings in the internet from the main site, the core network, which I showed you earlier. That is this cable here, which is labeled backhaul in. Now basically, that Netonic switch, which I showed you at the top of the rack at the core, this is an atonic switch, but it's a little baby version, right? It doesn't have many ports on it, but what it can do is supply sufficient power to all of the radios on the roof. So through these ethernet cables is not only data, but power to power the actual radios that are up there. And yeah, it really is that simple. I tried to keep it really minimal. 
Now I can't get up to the roof on this building without special permission, but you can see by the drone shots, these are the dishes and they're absolutely huge because they are going a long, 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 long way. But anywhere I can get my internet via a clear line of sight, I can then sell internet to customers. So this is a village where I'm at right now with zero internet. It's awful here. So people here are absolutely loving my connection. I even signed somebody up last week. His name is Nick and he said if I wanted to use his name to say how good the service was, I could do. He loves it and he says his kids aren't complaining complaining to him anymore, so so win-win really. So yeah, I think people expect this to be like crazy and to be really difficult to understand, but actually it's really, really simple and the brains of it really all goes into the configuration, the configuration of the edge router back at the core, the configuration of these switches, what's actually on them and what's what I've told these switches to do basically. That's where all of the brain power goes. But there you go, that is a real life example right here of a micro pop with the dishes on the roof. Now I'm gonna go and show you another micro pop and then show you a little bit into the configuration of the dishes on the roof and onto the switches. I know you'll be saying, Alex, you're sat in your kitchen. Well, my house is actually one of my sites. My connection comes in here and goes out. If you look at this drone shot of the actual dishes that are on the roof, you can see there's a few bits up there. Basically, one of those dishes brings the internet into my house and then the other one sends it out to another one of my sites. So it's kind of like a hop, a middleman, if you like. That's what this house is. And it is literally the exact same setup as the first micro pop site that you saw on the side of the building inside of that box. We've got a tiny little switch, which again, powers the radios and does what it's meant to do. It switches. <laughs> Now, speaking of switches, I did tell you guys I was gonna log on to some of the equipment and show you what it looks like to actually manage them. So this is the Netonic switch that is at the main core, the one that's in the main rack. And as you can see, on this uh, bottom graph here, we had a spike there of 80 megabits a second, which is absolutely crazy and we're not in peak times right now. So people are using my service, which is really cool to see just by this little graph. So if you guys look at the top of this web page, you can see a sort of layout of the switch. So if I click on this red port, for example, and highlight it, you can see the actual, well, you can see how much data that port is using. Look, someone's using 20 meg. That looks like somebody's streaming video through the AF24 radio, which is up on the roof. And then you can see there, if I zoom into this, the actual total amount of power that this switch can provide to all of its ports. And we're 50 watts out of 72, not that bad. Now, as well as showing you one of my switches, I wanna show you inside one of the radios. So if I log into this air fiber radio here, this is linking this house to the site that I showed you to start with. And as you can see, this is kind of what it looks like inside of a radio. You can see how much bandwidth the radios can push, uh, upload and download. You get a signal meter to see what the signal's like. Obviously, that's that minus 60, minus 59, 60 there, which is pretty good signal. Now, I know there'll be a load of people that look at this and say, Alex, you're only pushing 150 meg to one of your sites and I can push obviously more if I dial the settings in to push more but you see the thing is airspace up there if I have one radio using all of the airspace it means my other radios are gonna have a really hard time communicating so I need to be fair with the amount of bandwidth I'm using on the available spectrum you can actually see the available spectrum here and I'm only using a tiny little slither of it. But if I wanted to, I could use this much spectrum and have a load more data passing over my links, but I don't need it. And if I don't need it, then what's the point in using the airtime? So like I've said, there's loads of stuff that goes into this and obviously it's all me, it all comes back to me. I charge quite high prices for the broadband that I sell, but that's because it is me that does it. And if somebody has an issue with their broadband, they're not ringing through to somebody they don't know who's gonna come out next week. They ring through to me and I'm there in half a second to fix it. It's a really personal service that I try to offer to all of my clients. And I honestly have absolutely nothing but great feedback. So I'm trying this year to bring one more site online and it's really difficult to bring sites online because it's a lot involved, a lot of people have to get involved. Is there other problems? Yeah, of course there's problems. This is equipment we're talking about, technology. Technology just breaks. And obviously when things break and people go offline, people get angry and I have to deal with all of that. But luckily all of my customers are really, really nice people. And I can, as long as I get back to them and tell them what the problem is and let them know that I'm fixing it, then you know, I can't really do much more than that other than provide a decent service. 
but I'm knackered. There you guys have it. I do hope you've uh, I do hope you've enjoyed a little tour of my baby, my little business, and how it all works. A little bit weird showing people this much detail about the thing that I have built. <laughs> but nevertheless, I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I need to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. So basically, I don't need to say much more than this. A few of my current websites for my companies are on screen right now. This is my wireless website. All my hardcore fans will know that that website was obviously made on Squarespace because where else are you going to make a website if you don't really know what you're doing? Squarespace have basically got thousands of professionally designed templates so you can go through, peruse them all, and then choose one that you like, and then go ahead, upload all of your own pictures, text, and images to that template to make make it yours and make it personal. But the great thing why Squarespace is so easy to recommend to people is because obviously it caters for individuals, but it also caters to more advanced website creators too. So they've got things on there like HTML, which basically means you can go and add your own elements to the website if you know what you're doing with HTML. I don't. One of the tools I do use though is SEO, and that is basically to see how your website is gonna appear on search engines like Google, because that is what people, customers, are gonna be clicking on, so you wanna make sure it's top notch. The other thing I like about Squarespace as well is they're helping out people that are trying to sell physical products. So you can actually sell or set up e-commerce on your website to actually sell products. So yeah, it's all included in the one package basically. So if you do like my videos and you want to support what I'm doing here and you want to make a website on Squarespace, use my special code, which is MarsBar. Or basically just go to squarespace.com forward slash MarsBar vlogs and you will save yourself 10% off your first Squarespace purchase or domain. But that's me guys. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my day for once and uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.